Hi, and welcome to our video on inequalities. And here we're introducing the concept in algebra. So what's an inequality? Well, an equality is something like x equals 2. This is an equality because, well, right, it's an equality because of the equals sign. And that makes it an equality. And we can solve for x when we do that. Well, what if, what if it says something like x is not equal to 2, but maybe it's bigger than 2? Well, this sign here tells us that the two sides, each term, it may, or it, it, well, in this case, it tells us that one side is larger than the other. They're not equal. It's an inequality. So how do we deal with this in algebra? Well, it turns out that all the strategies that we have for equalities also work for solving inequalities, except for one, which we'll go over in a moment. So, so how does this work? Well, when you say that x is bigger than 2, this is a fun concept, because sometimes we get stuck in this mentality that x is a variable, and, and that means it equals a number. Well, here we're saying x is any number bigger than 2. So what could x equal? Well, x could equal, right, let's say we're just dealing with whole numbers for this, for this problem. If we're just dealing with whole numbers, x could equal 3, Right, let's list them out, and 4, and 5, and 6, and 7, and, well, right, it keeps going. It equals anything bigger than 2. And it can't equal 2 itself because it has to be bigger than 2. If we wanted to say, oh, well, x could equal 2, or it could be bigger than 2, we'd write this right here. So x could be bigger than or equal to 2. And then that would include 2 for x, and, and 3, and so forth. Now, here, when we graph this, we're going to include all the whole numbers and, and everything between. So let's graph x is greater than 2. Let's start there. Well, let's put 2, right? If we go to the right, that's increasing in value on a number line. If we go to the left, that's decreasing. So x is bigger than 2 tells us, well, let's, let's graph the variable value of x. Let's graph the values of x that can be put in this equation that work. In other words, this group right here, right? and also the numbers in between the whole numbers. So what do we do? Well, the, the formality is to put an open dot at 2, and we're graphing the values of x that work. So we go this way, because these numbers to the right of 2, if we plug them in here, they'll be bigger than 2. They'll work in this equation as a solution. So, so that's how we graph it. And here, in the next one, if x is greater than or equal to 2, well, the only difference now is that um, x could equal 2. So I'm going to start off with the same strategy, but now when I have this dot here, I'm going to fill it in. And that just means that 2 itself could also be a value of x that we plug in this equation. And that's the basic structure of, of, of how this works. But what happens when um, we, we divide or multiply both sides by a negative value? So we had, we had what? Well, we had x is, is bigger than 2, let's say. Well, if I multiply both sides by a negative number, what's going to happen? Well, instead of x, we're going to get negative x, right? Instead of 2, we're going to get negative 2. The question is, what happens to the sign? And usually what you're told, if you've ever seen this before, is you're told, go like this. Reverse the sign. So if it was facing this way, we now reverse it to face the other way. And that's true. Whenever we multiply or divide, right, by a negative value, our inequality changes direction. So our inequality changes direction. And this is going to make a lot of sense once we talk about it. And you might not, you know, agree with this, and it might not make sense. And that's fine, but if it doesn't make sense, try some values like try to plug in some stuff. So let's try a different example really quick. Let's say we had the number 4. 4 is bigger than 2. Okay, but let's multiply both sides by, by negative 1. So 4 times negative 1 is what? Well, 4 times negative 1 is negative 4. What's 2 times negative 1? Well, that's just negative 2. And what does this mean now? Well, well how are negative 4 and negative 2 related? Well, if we set up our number line, right, we can see that, well, here is 0, negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4. Well, negative 4 is all the way down here, right? Negative 2 is up there. So negative 4 is actually smaller than, than two, negative 2. So now, this is true. 
right, to keep this inequality correct, we're saying now that this side's larger. We reversed it. We multiplied both sides by the negative value. And if I zoomed out a little bit on the number line, I think you could see why this makes sense, you know, what's really happening here. So with zero in place right here, here's two and, and four. Here's negative two and negative four. We multiply these first two numbers, right? We have four is bigger than two. Well, four is bigger than two, which also means it's further from zero. Multiply it by a negative, right? And it, was going, it ended up going further from zero in a negative direction. In other words, it becomes more negative. Two also gets reversed, right? But two is closer to zero. So when we reverse it, you get a number that's smaller than two, but still closer to zero than four. So it's bigger than negative four. And that's a really important thing to realize, that when you divide both sides by a negative value, then what happens is the inequality changes direction. Um, and, and that actually makes sense here as well. For example, if I, if I take x, right, equals 1. Oh, sorry. x equals, let's say, 3. Well, that works in this equation, right? Because 3 is bigger than 2. Great. Well, what if we plug it in here? Well, then we get, well, negative x. So x was 3. What's negative x going to equal? Well, negative x will equal negative 3. And negative 3 is, in fact, less than negative 2, right? If we didn't reverse the sign, the inequality sign, it would say negative 3 is bigger than negative 2. And that's wrong, right? So, so we do have to reverse that inequality sign. So with that, that one exception in mind, we can solve these inequalities just like we would solve any equation. Let's try a couple of examples. What if we have something like something simple like 4x, right? plus 5 equals 17. Oh, not equals. Sorry about that. It is less than, less than 17. What do we do? Well, just like we would solve if we had just an equal sign in here, let's subtract 5 on both sides. Okay. Well, 5 minus 5 is 0. 17 minus 5 is 12. Our inequality is right there, and we have 4x is less than 12. Well, 4 times something is, is less than 12. So just like if you were saying 4 times something equals 12, we divide both sides by 4. right? And here, 4 divided by 4 is 1, and 12 divided by 4 is 3. So now we're left in the end with this. It's not an equality. It's an inequality. We find out in the end that x is less than 3. So that means any value of x less than 3, plug it in here, and it works. So for example, 4 times 1, that's less than 3, plus 5 will be less than 17. 4 times 1 is 4, plus 5 is, is 9, and that is less than 17, so that works. And we can even graph this, right? x is less than 3. When we graph that, we're, we're basically graphing all values that can be plugged in to our equation here that will actually work. So any x has to be anything less than 3. So open dot, line to the left. That means anything less than 3 will work in this equation. But well, what if we change things around a little bit? Let's, let's try to deal with that negative sign, because we talked about that a little bit. And I want to at least you know get at that and see how it works. What if we have, I don't know, negative 2x plus 4 is greater than 3x plus 6, what do we do? Well, well, now we're going to, no matter how we approach this, we're going to get stuck with uh, some kind of negative value. So what do we do? Well, let's um, move our numbers to this side and our variables to the left side. Okay? How do we do that? Well, to move the numbers, let's subtract 4. Let's get it out of here and do it to both sides. To move the variables to the left, let's subtract 3x. All right, we have 3x. Take it away and do that to both sides. Keep it balanced. So now we get 4 minus 4. That's 0. 3x minus 3x. That's 0. 6 minus 4, or positive 6, plus negative 4, same thing. That's just 2. Our sign here is, is facing this way. Negative 2x minus 3x. You can think of negative 2 minus 3. That's negative 5x. So now negative 5x is, is bigger than 2.
Okay, well, what do we do? We want to solve for x. So we're dividing both sides by negative 5. And we're dividing by a negative value. So our sign will reverse direction. And this cancels out. So we have x, right? Negative 5 divided by negative 5 is just 1. Is less than or anything less than 2 or over negative 5 or I'll write negative 2 fifths. So any value less than negative 2 fifths, if I plug it in this equation, it'll work. The left side will be larger than the right side. And I'm not going to plug that in and, and show you, but because I think uh, it, it might be starting to sink in here. But what you're doing is you're solving for x. But now you're solving for a group of values of x. And the one trick is, and the one thing that's different from equalities, is whenever you divide by a negative or multiply by a negative, you have to reverse the direction of the inequality. All right, hope that helped.